Hi, I'm Carl E. White with Mars One News with April showers with weather. I'm Terry with traffic. Crystal waters with sports. Good evening. This is Pro E. White with Mars One News. Today is March 20th, 2035, also the 20th anniversary of the Mars One launch announcement. Let's take a trip to the past and compare them now. Good morning, I am Penny Lane, and this is Channel 5 News for March 20th, 2015. Today, Mars One, a nonprofit group in the Netherlands, just announced that they are going to be sending people to Mars in 2025. We have a panel of experts to view on this topic. We are joined by Paige Turner, Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist, Ted E. Roosevelt, Professor of Applied Science, Human Sciences at the Cordia University, and Adam Zappel, President of Pioneer Astronautics and Founder and President of the Mars Society, and myself, Penny Lane, Director of an ECU's Institute for Coastal Science and Political Chairman of the Coast Bar Panel on Planetary Protection. First, we have Paige Turner, what are your thoughts on this? The Mars One launch has imposed major alterations in the world of science, exploration, and motivation for new ideas within the United States. With rising controversies concerning the safety of this expedition, researchers have directed extensive investigation towards the security of the expedition and the events subsequent to the arrival. With the protracted amount of time cosmonauts have endured in the zero gravity environment without long-term effects, it has proven that the gravitational situation should be safe to be experienced by humans, as opposed to the common misunderstanding that it would not. Additionally, a commonly misconceived idea is the fear of lack of supplies or equipment failure. But according to the mission architectures from the Mars One Society, the comprehensive research conducted by the United States researchers and scientists have addressed any potential complications that could possibly occur to impede with the advancing processes of the Mars One expedition, and therefore they have nullified these fallacies. Next, why is it that they're sending humans rather than robots to delve into this untouched land? Rising questions from spectators ponder the safety of those being sent to Mars with no chances of returning home to the Earth. Moreover, many question how ethical it is to put the safety of humans in stake for subsequent research findings. But thousands of Americans are still willing to volunteer and take part of this expedition, as humans are remarkably better at going beyond pre-programmed objectives and techniques that a given robot would perform. If mission objectives change due to a new discovery, there's no need to reprogram a human. This saves time, money, and a chance to disaster. For instance, if an extreme situation, a human will never enter a cycle of instant reboots because a programmer forgot to clear out their memory or something. Even in cases where there is no change in the mission profile, a human is superior to a robot. For example, a trained geologist. They would be considerably better at identifying specimens which are worth investigating than would a robot. Or other scientists would have been more efficient to discover modern, modernistic elements or organisms. Perhaps the most important of all, though, humans bring along their instincts about the line of research that are worth following up on, something that no robot could ever be able to do. Best of all, Humans' missions are virtually guaranteed to last longer than current rover missions. For instance, while the minimum duration of the Mars rovers are to be considered a success was 90 days, a successful human mission that takes 910 days, roughly 2.5 years, with 550 of those days spent on the surface of Mars, they can get a lot more research and findings done. Essentially, the Mars One launch has created a great amount of unrest amongst the American society. Therefore, research measures by researchers and scientists have answered a great majority of these questions, ensuring the safety of those who quest along, allowing a great number of U.S. citizens to volunteer. Not only does the launch draw volunteers for the exploration, but it opens up a whole new world of research and settlement in different planets. Sure, that may be true, but are you actually considering the state of the citizens that will be going up into Mars? It is no shock that although the aspect of colonizing a foreign planet may prove captivating, masses of citizens aren't jumping up to the chance to be aboard the mission. 
The Mars One project cannot afford to be picky about the audience it sends off into space, as already the amount of volunteers does not remain a vast population. Therefore, the process has become available to international citizens at fairly young ages in healthy states. As such, a mission is the first in Earth's complete history. Although they can be assumed, the problems which may occur throughout the mission cannot be guaranteed or predicted. Various factors have the possibility of going wrong, and many unknown certainties about the process remains, as well as the long list of what ifs. What if the equipment malfunctions? What if they cannot adapt to the atmosphere or environment? What if there are breakouts? This proves to be a prominent question. The state of health of citizens will face the, during the mission. Various factors may lead to a decline of health in astronauts and volunteers, one being the radiation of the population. According to ETC Journal by Keller Helly, NASA has estimated simply a three-year round trip to Mars would expose one person to the lifetime rec recommended amount of space radiation. If just three, uh, three years would expose someone to this much radiation, what about a lifetime? Spending any more extended amount of time on the planet may result in negative effects brought about the solar rays, such as cataracts, increased risk of cancer or sterility. Volunteers have no president radiation shielding, and on their website, Mars One does not offer the little solutions president, present to counteract radi radiation. Even if the Mars One mission proves successful in its promising opportunities, and countries such as the United States invest in such projects, any citizen in such a project may have short lifespans and have little po possibility to re reproduce, failing the mission of further colonization through populating with already present citizens, which would much larger ben benefit Mars One because native-born um, citizens may, res may have resistance to the natural environments, wasting U.S. funds on failed investments. The process of growing food will also pr prove a complicated action, as it has been determined plants will be required to be grown through mechanical processes, which may require limited power resources. It is unclear how much space will be allowed for the growth of food, and diets will be very limited. Constricting to a vegan plan, plan that will that will only include the most hardy plants. Shelters will provide very little space for the residents, and weather conditions on the planet may produce harsh sandstorms capable of corroding the shelters. Food and shelters, two essential towards two essentials towards life, are already under strict constrictions, along with the mental health of the inhabitants. All personal communication will be cut from Earth, and the only form of entertainment may be found through streaming videos or music. As a result, the population will undergo waves of stress, which also, which along with the physical aspects, may shorten lifespans and impact health. As the Mars One project is open towards an international population, citizens from the U.S. may be found on the volunteer list. Who may be, these citizens may be wasting lives upon the uncertainties the project holds. The country also determines to support and help fund the same or similar future projects, and success is not seen. Funds or better investment opportunities are wasted. The project pertains to many uncertain factors and unanswered questions, which could cripple an entire economy and its national populations. Families will be sending loved ones into space, and if the mission is a failure, negative effects will be had on those U.S. families. Citizens back on the ground will face emotional pains which may be focused on protests through the blinding grief, and the United States may face failed opportunities which will take the consequences on the country's economy, citizens, and morale. I disagree. The positive implications vastly outweigh the negative possibilities. As you know, Mars One is a not-for-profit organization based in the Netherlands that will establish a permanent human settlement on Mars in 2025. This historic project will enable scientists, adventurers, and explorers to live the dream. What dream exactly? The dream of the advancement of science and the understanding of space. It will be an amazing motivation that will inspire future generations to believe anything is possible and anything can be achieved. But why should we go to Mars, you ask? Mars One explains that it's the prospect of adventure that compels humans to seek new frontiers to explore. It's the same reason Columbus went west, or Marco Polo went east. Mars One stated, there are people for whom traveling to Mars has been a, their dream for their entire life. They relish the challenge, not unlike the ancient Chinese, the Micronesians, 
the Vikings, the untold Africans, and the famed explorers of old world Europe, Europe who left everything behind to spend most of their lives at sea. A one-way mission to Mars is about exploring a new world and an opportunity to conduct the most revolutionary research ever conceived, to build a new home for humans on another planet. The feeling of being among the first to inhabit Mars, to step out of the capsule and leave their footprints on the surface is immeasurable. Mars One calls it the realization of an amazing dream. But also, the experience for those who back on Earth is life-changing. Every country will be watching, transfixed. The mission will affect the entire globe. In the words of Neil Armstrong, the first man who walked on the moon, it will be a giant leap for mankind. Mankind, not just scientists or the Netherlands or America, but the entire human race. The world will remember where they were, who they were with, and how they felt. Mars One says it perfectly. This will be our moment in 2025. In addition to making one's mark on the world and to being a part of something great, curiosity will be satisfied. Hundreds of unanswered questions will find relief on the Mars One mission as it helps to surpass our current understanding of space. The mission may offer clues to basic inquiries like, where did Mars come from? Can it teach us about Earth's history? Is there life on Mars? Mars One anticipates these discoveries eagerly and also recognizes these as just three of the burning questions scientists have all over the globe. Last but not least, or not even limited to, the Mars One mission to colonize Mars will lead to progress. Mars One says it will jumpstart developments in multiple areas. Just a few of these areas include recycling, solar energy, food production, and the advancement of medical technology. Many esteemed members of part of the scientific community have expressed their feelings of approval for the Mars One project and humankind as a whole, their progress in space. Thank you. Your points are strong, but going to Mars is still not going to work out well. Everyone knows the old joke about sending someone to Mars, someone you hate to Mars. But this concept is now going to be a reality. According to Fox News, Mars One Corporation is planning on sending 10 crew members to start colonizing in 2025. We will send humans to Mars in 2025. They will live the rest of their lives there, said the CEO of Mars One. In 2016, they are going to send supplies vessels to Mars. In 2018, they are sending a rover. After the first shipment of troops, they are going to be sending four people every two years. One of the big issues about having the one of the big issues people are having about this fact is that the mission is a one-way trip to Mars. But even Buzz Aldrin, the famous astronaut who the set who was the second man who landed on the moon, um, even says that it's the only way. But mostly because of the unfavorable fuel to get back. But the large, but the largest problem with this mission is it will be it will be created. It will need a controlled and uh, government on Mars since everyone has lived only on Mar on Earth. It's the it's going to be hard to make a sophisticated government in such a short time and short experience, especially since it's on a new planet. Our world has always had bad history of making strong governments. It keeps repeating itself. Being a space because it, it will be in space will not make any difference. Yes, it, it will be easier to put some laws in place because we have had experience, but controlling the colony from such a faraway place will be very difficult. Even when creating the United States of America, our ancestors had the hardest time communicating with the king from England. Even with the most advanced technologies, it does not change the fact that to start off the colony, they need a ruler and rulers in place the second they land on that ship, off the ship. Or the whole mission will on the new red planet will just blow up. <laughs> Finally, a mission with robots over five billion dollars, will uh, which makes humans cost less than, um, which should never be the case. Like. We're more, more than robots, like, yes. 
there might be more scientific discoveries, but a mission will not but this mission will not help anything but that. Thank you, Adam, Paige, and Ted for joining me on this discussion. Send your hair to doggy school with Shampoodle. Does this look familiar? You look like a disgusting poodle. Disgusting? You need to try this shampoodle. It'll make all your poodleness go away. Hey, babe. Hey. I'm good. Thanks, shampoodle. Tam your hair like a dog. Good evening, folks. This is April Showers with the weather brought to you by Quest.NASA um, with their article of Mars Facts. It is believed the climate on Mars used to be quite similar to Earth, although when all of its carbon dioxide was used up, its conditions shifted towards a much more extreme level. If you are near the equator today, the temperature may reach a maximum t uh, of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit this summer, but watch out because the maximum low temperature is estimated to be around negative 225 degrees Fahrenheit, so make sure to stay bundled up. Tonight's humidity is expected to reach somewhere around 100% due to the air's expected saturation. However, this afternoon we are bracing ourselves for some nice unsaturated and dry air. If you'll be in Vikings Landing today, some folks are, should be expecting a bad hair day. The record wind speeds for this area reach about 60 miles per hour, and although the planet's complete wind speeds are slowing down, make sure to watch out for dust storms expected around 1 p.m. today. Today we will be experiencing very low air pressures of, of about 0.224 of mercury as usual. And folks, please remember, don't forget your spacesuits if you want to take a walk today. Mars' atmosphere is primarily composed of carbon dioxide and lacks oxygen, so don't forget to wear your masks. We don't want another case like Jimmy's. Now let's go to karaoke with traffic. <laughs> Thanks, April. A solar storm disrupted our usual interstellar traffic this morning. We failed to receive our new shipment of supply units because of the launcher's failure to release the payload into Earth's orbit because of the collision with the space debris. Our landing capsule operators were left empty-handed due to the delivery, without the delivery. As you know, the supply units assist in providing our community with food, solar panels, space parts, and other components needed for life here on Mars. But don't worry, the Mars One Earth base has assured another shipment due as soon as possible. Oh, just in. There seems to be a minor disturbance in Section 2 in the living units. The living units are outfitted with deployable inflatable habitats, and due to the cramped spaces, we do sometimes encounter traffic jams in the tunnels connecting the living units, resulting in an excess amount of oxygen being used. Life support units are on the scene right now, supplementing oxygen and cleaning the area. Clearing the area. I would recommend taking Section 1 and Tunnel B as an alternate route. Also, last night there was a meteor shower that many people were eager to see, of course using their Mars suits to protect them from the harsh environments outside. Outside the living unit, it is a popular activity to check out the showers from our view here on Mars, but there was a fender bender in airlock one due to the large amount of friction and pushing to exit the living unit. The riled up crowd created a rip in the protective barrier in the airlock along with a shortage of Mars suits. We remind you to please return Mars suits when finished using them. And we advise you to avoid airlock one until further notice. Reparative measures are being taken to fix the tear. If you usually exit through airlock one, please use, utilize the other airlocks instead. Tonight, there's a scheduled arrival of new members in our community. I know we're all excited, but please refrain from crowding um, the landing module. After the seven month journey, our members will be disoriented and unused to our living arrangements. Do your best to be welcoming, but do not all just surge into the airlock creating a traffic jam like last time. Also, be aware of the transit vehicle that they arrive in, or it will alter some traffic patterns for some time after their arrival. And in conclusion of our traffic segment, be aware of rush hour, which will begin shortly. Stay out of the way during this time. The mechanics and workers are returning to their living spaces, and a large influx of members will fill the inflatable tunnels completely. Thanks, Nana Crystal with Sports. Today we are holding the national championships between our two korfball finalists, the Mars Rovers and the Saturn Rings. Korfball is a mixed gender team, team with two um, sets of eight. The korfball was invented by a Dutch te school teacher in 1902. 
in the Netherlands, there are about 580 clubs with over 100,000 people playing korfball. Korfball is also played all around the world, especially in Belgium and Kite Fabric. Here you are. Such a leader and a role model to our young um, Mars kids. Yes, I am. How many games have you won this season? 17. Out of how many? Five. That is amazing. I know. You I know. are such a role model. I am like fangirling right now. This, this is, is so for cool. you, Kate Fabic fans. You're my number one. You're there every day. Forget the haters, man. Yeah. Corpo. 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 Yeah. Corpo. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite thing about corfball? Just love getting out my rage, you know? The sport lets me do that. I can't do that in our normal Mars environment, but here, I can really let it go on the field. I can be myself. I can be a like real me. Yeah. How do you feel about your teammates? They suck. They suck? They're so mean to me. Oh, I'm so sorry. They're just jealous of me. I'm the star player. They're jealous of me. I'm number one, you know? Yeah, number one. Well, you are number one, Kite Fabric. I you know. are a role model. You are a hero to our Mars kids and Thank everyone you. else. Hi, I need my makeup done for prom. Come to Cash's Beauty Shop and get all your beauty stuff done. We're Cash's Girls. I'm Candy with an I. I'll be doing your makeup. I'm Candy with an I. I'll be doing your hair. Let's get started. Come to Cash's Beauty Shop to make sure you look like this for prom. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Pro E. White signing off Mars Room News. Tune back in tomorrow morning for 8 o'clock news.